Good afternoon and welcome from 1UP Racing's first trip south of the border to the Mexico City Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez for the running of race number 10 of the 2023 1UP Superstar Series season. This two and a half mile twisting road course is full of surprises with a lot of drama on the opening lap and a lot of strategy to be played because tires are going to degrade very quickly, fuel's going to burn off, a lot of excitement set to take place over the next 24 laps. And alongside me to bring you all the action once again is James Ellison once again. Like I said, this is going to be a very interesting race. Our first trip to Mexico, a lot of fun to be had here, especially on this very long front straightaway here that extends nearly half the length of the circuit. Yeah, this is this is going to be a fun one. And, of course, like I said, first trip south of the border, it's going to be, going to be wild, and I'm sure the fans are going to really enjoy it. Absolutely, with a twisting S's in the middle of the lap, two mains, two, three long straightaways to complete the rest of the lap, and of course the infamous Peraltada, the final corner to complete the lap. It's going to be a lot of fun for these 42 drivers to navigate, as we can now bring you the full starting lineup for today's 24 lap race. Same drivers we had at Willow Springs, but a new set of characters up front as Roberto Crown Jr. takes pole position here in Mexico City. Still looking for that first career win, could he get it here? this afternoon nick ortiz lines up alongside him he's looking for a win as well to break a very long winless drought for that 91 group christian vargas and lane sanders line up on row two and austin holloman his second straight starting spot inside the top 10 can he convert it here this time around yeah that that remains to be seen and but we you got like you said you got a number of faces up here you see anderson reed is up here of course Winner at uh, Willow Springs, Ben McDonald. He's got a little bit of work to do, but looking toward the back of the field is certainly going to be interesting to see. We got William Brock back there, Eric Monaco, Emma Carter. Let's see what they can do to get up there in the front. Yeah, and with only 20 la 24 laps to get there, this may be one of our shorter road races of the year, but it will be it will by no means be short of entertainment, that is for sure. So with that being said, we've got 42 cars ready to take the green flag here in Mexico, and we are ready to bring you the action for 24 laps. This is the 1UP Superstar Series from Mexico City, and the green flag is getting set to fall on the field, so get ready. It's about to get very, in very interesting here down in Mexico. As the field rolls out, rolls out of the Peraltada to, onto the long, long front straightaway here in Mexico City, Roberto Crown Jr. and Nick Ortiz both would love to get a win for very different reasons. As they head towards the first safety car line, we're coming to the green flag here in Mexico City. The green flag is out, and we're underway here in Mexico City for 24 laps. Crown gets the advantage off the line. He streaks down this long, long front straightaway. You see that chicane painted down there? These guys are not going to be doing that whatsoever. And we got, oh, we got a crash in the back, and it looks like a blue car back there, and it's Dylan Young. Dylan Young, who was second uh -oh. in points involved in a crash, as is Emma Carter, last week's pole sitter involved. That's unfortunate. Oh, and another crash. And we have Duke, Duke Ansack in the 83 involved in this one. Jason Parker in the 76. William Brock. Chase Christ in the 55. He's going very slowly down the second straightaway at a lap as Nick Ortiz takes the lead from Roberto Crown Jr. heading through the S's. Ortiz, your new leader, halfway through the first lap. Ortiz is sneaky, man. Took advantage. Well, he, he obviously doesn't know whether or not the cameras are pointed at him, but if he did, that would have been considered an advantage to sneak to the lead, but or early on, he's got it. Yeah, now heading down the, what's considered the back straightaway here at Mexico City, heading into the Peraltada, the final corner, this long, long 180-degree corner around the stadium here in Mexico City. They use that for a lot of things, but racing, not one of them. As they head on to the long front straightaway once again. There's a little bump on the straight. They're all swerving to avoid. Nick Ortiz comes down the main straightaway. He completes lap one in the lead. And that very important right there as they go as they go through the paint lines you see all the marks and oh man i've got a feeling that 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 that's going to be a black flag for for him right there at echo evans ross there she had to slow down for all that and not a very good start for a lot of people 
Yeah, Chase Chris, you can see him struggling to make the co the corner here. He's he's pulling it into the pit lane on the end of his first lap. That's a tough break after for just his second start in this car for the 55 team. They they were they had such a good a decent run going at Willow Springs, but it's all going to be undone here in Mexico City. He's pulling into the pits. He might try and repair that, but this is going to be a lengthy repair job for that 55 team. See here, and yeah, they are going to try to repair it, and he is going to be a rolling chicane. That's all I say. That's all we can say about that because while the one that's painted on the front stretch is not being used, in any wounded car that stays on the track is going to is going to replace that. Especially down the long front straightaway here, these guys go from about 90 miles an hour out of the Peraltada to about 185 miles per hour at the end of this straightaway. So it's a it's a very long stretch of asphalt these guys are te are tearing down. As Nick Ortiz, he leads lap number two. He's looking for his first win since 2021 at North Wilkesboro. This would be a very welcome win for him if he can get it done. But it's still very early in this race, of course. Yeah, very. But he's already got an early advantage. It looks like he gained a full second from one from the free from lap two to well, completion of lap one to completion of lap two there. So if Crown wants to actually get this first victory, he's got a little bit of work to do to catch up, but provided he can't get a pit strategy. Yeah, that's another thing to keep an eye on. If Crown can get an undercut on Ortiz, he'll shoot towards the front because the, the tires, they will fall off by a, a great margin here. Just because of the twisty nature of the S's, the lateral motion back, forth, back, forth, it's just, it, t it takes a toll on these tires and that heavy acceleration zone out of Peraltada. So he's got, the, the tires are going to take a beating here, but we should only expect one stop today. It's expected, but... Give, given the damage that some cars have already received, it's not going to be the case for everybody. But right now, it's looking pretty good for Ortiz and Crown to stay where they are. You see, you see Vargas and Sanders back there, and you see Devin Fair moved up to fifth from pa past uh, Allman there. But he's still hanging in there in sixth place there. Yeah, this, this is a much better run for Austin Holloman than he had last week. At Willow Springs, he's actually hanging on to his spot in the top ten. He might have lost a spot at the start, but he's still running a very solid six. If he can finish there, that'd be his best career finish in this series. But Roberto Crown Jr. is the gap has stabilized at about one point one and a quarter seconds as they head down onto onto the Transera straight now. So these guys are building up speed, but they gotta go through this quick right hand kink and then slow it way down for this. An another 180 degree corner it's a bit of a curved one but we make our way back came cole making a pit stop he must have had some damage earlier and chase chris has returned to the racetrack albeit one lap down one lap down and likely going to be in everybody's way when they start catching him but at least he's able to continue that that's the important part yeah so came cole he's exiting the pit lane he should be able to continue at a better pace than he would have if he had stayed out with that damage. But he's exiting the pits. Here comes Ortiz through the final turn, so he might be lapped here pretty soon, like the 27 of Cam Cole. But as Nick Ortiz exits Peraltada to complete lap number four, swerving to avoid that bump in the road there, it's almost like oh, it's almost like Monica where you have to swerve to avoid a bump there for open wheel cars. But as Nick Ortiz starts lap number five, he's got a very healthy lead. He grew, grew it out by another half second. The gap now 1.7. Yeah, it's it's looking real good for him here, and he's he's just hanging in there and just he's not having to fight real hard, and neither is Crown really to have to except for getting up there to him, which no easy feat, obviously. Yeah, Ortiz is just doing what he needs to do. If it, he's it's been a long time for Ortiz. He's He went for a winless season in 2022. That's the first time ever in his career he's gone without a win. He, but he's determined to get back to victory lane. He's seen Mark Davey rack up a bunch of wins since his last one. And he's seen himself drop down the finish line motorsports pecking order. Down the third driver behind Justin Hutchinson and Mark Davey. Ortiz looking to redeem himself quite a bit here. And he's doing a great job so far is to see Christian Vargas runs third, three seconds off the lead. He's still yet to get a top five this season, but this could be his best opportunity yet. Yeah, if he can just stay right there and not have a 
have others overtake him on pit strategy when the time comes for those stops, it could really be a good day for him. Not like he hasn't had a terrible season, unlike some of his competitors around him, but he could really use this. Yeah, if he's going to win a third consecutive championship, he's got to get a move on because he is currently uh, about ninth in the points, which is not a terrible season, but far below his expectations. He's he's the all time one of the all time wins leaders here in the series. He is looking to extend that at some point, but he's he's still looking for his first top five of the year. As we look back now, Lane Sanders and the Tax Layer Dodge. He's looking to get his second top five in a season and dig himself back, bring himself back up into the top ten in points. He's currently eighth, just ahead of Christian Vargas. I actually actually they they are tied for eighth in points currently. With Sanders having the tiebreaker, but. Lane Sanders doing what he needs to do here, running solid fourth ahead of, in a basically a revolution racing sandwich. He's got Vargas ahead of him, Devin Fair directly behind. So he's do, he's not in bad company. He's do, and he's punching way above his weight so far. Yeah, and then you look back there behind behind them, you see Hallman has lost another spot, but he's not falling dramatically like he was like he was at Willow Springs. He's still hanging tough. Yeah, he's doing a great job back there. He's running seventh. He got passed by Jared Polanski, who's gained now four spots since the start of this race. That's a strong run for the 18 team. But as they come across now to complete lap number six, Austin Holloman, we talked about him. He's having a strong run in this nine car. He's the highest running rookie so far in this race, currently running seventh. The next highest rookie, you'd have to go quite a ways back, I believe, to David Wells in the 19 for the next one. But... With Austin Holloman performing this well, this is a good run for him because we're going to come up on a few races in, a, in a, the coming weeks where a lot more part-time cars are entered and it, there's no guarantees he'll make the field. So he needs to get in the top 30 in owner's points to guarantee himself a spot into those races. And so far, he's doing what he needs to. Yeah, all you can do is ride around right here and hope for the best. And right now, the best is not falling dramatically which is really big except he's got willow springs winner dick mcmillan right behind him or not mcmillan uh, mcdonald sorry yeah here's jake mcmillan he's in the middle of a hornet's nest back here from about ninth on back hutchinson davy mcmillan patrick smith in 12th he's he's ride shopping for next year he's not going to be back with monster motorsports next season the defending Nitro National Champion. He's, he's got a good resume, but he needs to put some solid results together if he's going to have a ride for next year. And add Anderson Reed to that list as well, and two cars back in that bright yellow number five. Anderson Reed's got to got to find a new ride for next year, and he's doing a pretty solid job. He started ninth, so he's fallen a little bit backwards, but he's currently running in. I believe the 13th position right now so it's 14th position so a strong run going for Anderson Reed at the moment one of his worst track types he'll admit road course is not his specialty but he's doing a nice job he's hanging on to a spot in the top 15 just ahead of Jeff Bolton and that's a very good thing to see for him and they mentioned it the ride shopping has begun for quite a few drivers across across the entire one-ups league and you know, it, it, silly season is always an interesting time, and several names you're looking you're looking to see where they're going to go, and it's going to be interesting to see what kind of what kind of resume some of these drivers are going to be handing out. Of course, we know Jeff Bolton's going to be back next year in his 38. But how about this, Ali Ahmed in this 44, making just his second career start for Pirate Bay Motorsport, their their third ever start in this series. They're running a solid 16th at the moment, a very strong run for this 44 camp who are building a strong team in the truck series but up in the superstar series they've got a bigger hill to climb but they're they're climbing it pretty well they're running in 16th place ahead of quite some good front runners you got aaron hall back there in 17th you got chris Lattimore running 18th jeffrey finn guy is back here in the 19th spot so that 44 is really punching above its weight so far and I gotta look at you're know, looking at Chris Lattimore there. That that is a good run for him. Mid pack, but I don't think it matters much. I think he's gonna take every good result he can get, and it'll feel like a great result until until he gets better results. 
Yeah, he's, and he's running ahead of some heavy hitters. Jeffrey Finguy, Justin Henley's back here in 20th. So his run of top 10s could be in jeopardy. Drehan Stojanovic and the team Dayspring 98. They're currently hanging out in 21st ahead of Bouchard and Bobo Jones, who's also looking for a ride next year. The first ever one-up race, one-up superstar winner, Bobo Jones. He's looking for a ride next year, and he is a very good driver. He's just had some terrible luck this year. Stephen Gale, we, we believe he's almost got a ride for next year. Miles Mashburn, we know, is coming back. They're battling it out for 24th. Zachary Fitzwater in the 26th spot, a bit behind his teammate, but... Emma Carter's got some damage on her 70 car, but she runs 28th, a, a decent run given the circumstances. Brandon Beal currently third, 29th on track after starting last, so that's a good run for him. And Stanley Andrews, having his best run of the season so far, rounding out the top 30 ahead of a bunch of other cars trying to jockey for position behind him. Yeah, he's doing really good right here as he's kind of come under fire from the 31 of A.J. Jones, but that's still a pretty strong car, all things considered. Yeah, and here comes A.J. Jones side by side down into the first corner. They're going to dive it in. And Felix Anderson from 32nd, he's going to make it three wide going in the corner. The 31 cool. and 24 make contact. They're going to go three wide for this first corner. And could Andrews lose two spots in the span of three corners? You bet, because A.J. Jones takes the 30th place off of him. But he does keep a one place. He defends from Felix Anderson. Yeah, Anderson had to check up big there. That was some very risky maneuvers that didn't quite work out for him, but it didn't destroy anyone's day. And back here, Sam Donato. He must have he went off track at Peraltada a few laps ago. That's why he is mired deep in the field now. Ryan Vasquez runs 35th out of Dylan Young, who easily this is his worst race of the season so far. He'll likely fall out of the top two in points for the first time in a while. Parker, Brock, Evans Ross, they run in the back few positions and David Wells has come in for a pit stop in this 19 car he now runs 40th on the racetrack he just got past Cam Cole a lap ago but he's got the freshest tires of anybody in the field and theoretically he could make it to the end of this thing if he can make it to the end of this thing and strategy doesn't play against him oh boy this could get real interesting because Wells is currently the fastest guy on the track right now. So as Ortiz and Crown, their lap times have fallen quite significantly. They're running about two seconds a lap slower than they did at the start of the race, while Wells is currently running on pace with the fastest laps of the day. So Wells should be able to streak away from these guys pretty easily. But will this come back to bite him later in the race when everybody else has fresher tires and he doesn't anymore? That remains to be seen. As right now, looking at the top ten, it's kind of bookended by my teammates here. You talking about Mark Davey, how how Ortiz has been watching him get win after win and basically pass him on in the finish line order. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but yeah, it it's gonna be it's gonna be real interesting to see here. As uh, well, for a second there, I thought he was pitting, but. That's just how slow that he was going for a second. That, that was me getting confused. Yeah, it's a bit a bit tricky, this pit entry here. But it, it shouldn't cause too many issues. As you see, Devin Fair has actually gotten past Lane Sanders to move up into the fourth spot. So Fair moves up another spot. Sanders drops back to fifth where he's got Jared Polanski all over his back bumper for a spot in the top five. But meanwhile, Nick Ortiz streaking away to an almost three second lead. But he's got to be careful because Cam Cole is going to be lapped pretty soon. Yeah, this is, uh, this is something I was kind of expecting to see happen with, like, Cam Cole. I was expecting Chris to be lapped again, maybe at some point, but he's somewhere else on the track, still doing a good job, but Ortiz just, he just he's just not really having to fight real hard at all. Yeah, he could afford to manage his tires a little better, and that could allow him to save some speed for the end of the stint, where he can potentially get out ahead of Cam Cole and stay ahead of the rest of his challengers. So, Ortiz doing a strong job, and he has, and this is a new territory for him. He has not won on a road course since the season finale all the way back in 2020, and that was his first career win. So, 
A lot has happened, and, and another thing that's happened, Stanley Andrews has gone off track at Peraltada. He was running 30th, now he's running 40th. Yeah, good run, and I hate to say it, but I feel like talking good about him might have cursed him. You know, the old commentator's curse. Uh, so, if that turns out to be the case, sorry, Stanley. Yeah, but but you see Chase Chris directly ahead of David Wells now. Chris is running well off the pace, but you see Andrew's making his way down the back straightaway now. He's not too far off the back of this group, so he might be able to gain a few more spots by the end of it. But here comes Ortiz. He's right behind Cam Cole, and this is the worst place to catch a lap car, heading into the S's, because then you'll be stuck behind him for the entirety of this sequence of corners. Yeah, but at least he's got a bit of a, a buffer to keep keep from worrying about having Crown all over him, unless somehow he just can't get by Cam Cole beyond the S's. We're going to find out here soon, though. Yeah, he's got to stick behind, and this is just heartbreak for Nick Ortiz. This is just agonizing, because the longer you're behind a lap car, especially in high-speed in high speed corners like those, you run the risk of overheating your tires, you run the risk of overheating everything else. Here comes Ortiz trying to make a move into Peral Tata, but Cam Cole shuts the door on him. Ah. Uh, that, I feel I feel like the courtesy flag is going to be getting late here soon, but he, he doesn't want to go lap down, that's for sure. Yeah, but he might not have a choice here soon because here comes Ortiz with a vastly superior car. And at, by the time they get to start finish, he is ahead of the 27. So put the put Cam Cole a lap down to join Chase Chris back there. But now Ortiz has to get to relax a little. And now Roberto Crown Jr. has to worry about this. Because believe it or not, we're coming to 10 laps to go in this race. And we still haven't seen anybody in the lead group on pit road yet yeah it's gonna be real interesting to see who who goes first some drivers might wait for their competitors to move and see what they do others will just go and you might want to go early here because the tire fa the fall off is increased to about three and a half seconds per lap now compared to what it was at the start of the race. Meanwhile, back here, we've got some interesting battles for third and for fifth. The two Revolution teammates battling for third, and Sanders and Polanski battling it out for the final spot in the top five. Yeah. I gotta give Blaine credit. He's doing a real good job here. His, uh, his plan is working out real good right here. He's, uh, he's always got to worry about us holding off Polanski, though, for the moment. Yeah, and here but here comes Ortiz. Group Harold Tata right now and he's going to stay out another lap, so he's going to come to 10 laps to go here, and he's got a pretty big lead. The gap was three seconds. Crown didn't gain a lot of time, despite Ortiz being held up by the lap car. We'll see what the gap is at the line now. Oh, boy. It, ga it gained by a full second on that lap. So now Roberto Crown Jr., four seconds off the lead. He's got to think about pitting soon. Yeah, there comes a point where you realize that just running around isn't going to work and you got to try something new and hope and hope your competitors don't do the same thing. Meanwhile, back here for third, you got Vargas and Fair battling it out for third spot. These two very familiar racing each other as teammates now. This is their second season, entering their second season together. But Vargas is very determined to hold off teammate Devin Fair here because Vargas needs a top five finish to get himself back in the championship contention, whereas Devin Fair needs a top five just to be in the conversation. As Polanski tries to get around Sanders for fifth, but it looks like the 87 is going to clear him once again. Oh, they're still side by side through the last part of the S's, but I think Sanders is going to hold on to it here. Just barely he holds on to it. Yeah, Polanski had to check up just a bit. Meanwhile, you look at back there, uh, Austin Holloman. He's been holding. He's been holding off McDonald for a while. Yeah, and you see those skid marks at Peraltada where Donato and a few others went off earlier. But we're at nine laps to go. We're well past halfway, and no one's pitted yet. So these guys try watching each other on the pit wall very closely here. Trying to see what happens next. As it looks like a few cars came in early. William Brock at the back of the pack. Jason Parker in the 76. They came in the pit road early. Let's see if that gains them a few spots by the end of this thing. Yeah, you're at the back. You might, and you're already damaged. You might as well, right? 
That is definitely true. As we see Brock now sh running right behind Nick Ortiz to see about putting him back a lap down. But Ortiz is doing a good job. You see Chase Crist running by himself. William Brock trying to unlap himself here from Nick Ortiz, get, trying to get his tires up to temperature. There's Chase Chris. He's going to go a second lap down here soon. But I, you got to imagine, with the laps running out, you'd imagine Ortiz coming to pit road pretty soon. And if he comes, you better believe everybody else is coming. Yeah, because they don't want to get him to have that advantage that could come from the undercut, or, well, not really an undercut anymore, I don't think, but from, from pitting before everyone else, no matter if you call it an undercut or not, it's... It's got it's got to be time here soon, and uh, it looks like here yeah. he comes. Yep, here comes Ortiz on the pit road at the end of lap 16, and here comes Crown. He is wasting no time joining him there, and it looks like everybody else is coming in this time. No split strategy here. Everybody's coming in the pit at the end of lap 16. We'll see if any stragglers takes take the opportunity to get a lap led here because the start finish line's past the end of the pit lane. We'll see if anybody takes a gamble. We got one. Eric Monaco is going to stay on the racetrack, pick up a bonus point. He's going to take the lead at Mexico City. Yeah, he's he's going to try, but um, he may not have made it before Ortiz. But he he he, want, he needed to try something. He wanted to try something different. Oh, and we got and contact oh. on pit road between Holloman and Fair. That got a big dent in the side of the 51. That could slow his stop down just a little bit. They scramble around to the right side. Ortiz exits first. We'll see if they pull out the damage on the 51. He's down and away. Didn't cost them much time at all. Everybody now trying to get back onto the racetrack. It's such a narrow pit lane here. Con some contact is inevitable. But looks like everybody's making it out in one piece. Ortiz keeps his lead. But Eric Monaco leads the race now. But he's got to be pitting this next time by. Yeah, he has to because he can't afford to stay out there any longer. And uh, it looks like looks like Holloman wants to get back by Polanski, but it's not. Well, wait, there it goes. Look at that, Austin Holloman making a pass on Jared Polanski. That's for a net sixth place. So Holloman doing a fantastic job in this race, a career day for that for for the rookie out of Australia. He's doing a good job, but Eric Monaco is your current leader. He's the highest running rookie right now, but he you better you you best guess he's probably going to pit this time around. If he doesn't, then something's then there's something crazy going on and here he comes. He he realized he got he, he got what he wanted. Now he's going to the pits as he uh, Cam Cole coming out of his stall. Yeah, that's Cam Cole's second stop of the race. You see Monaco coming in for his first and what should be only stop in this race. Let's see what he feeds back out into. But there's Ortiz rounding the final corner now, so he will easily retake the lead back. And man, if anything, it looks like he extended his lead over Roberto Crown Jr. Let's see what the gap is at the line as they pass Monaco in the pit lane. And survey says at the end of lap 17... 5.4 seconds the gap between Ortiz and Crown. So pitting on the same lap, it definitely didn't help the 81, I think. But barring a major issue for Ortiz, this race might be done. However, there's still a lot a lot of way to go in this race. We still have seven laps to go. And who knows what could happen. I mean, the field's spread out, but that, that doesn't always mean that it's going to stay that stay calm. No, and it's and it looks like pitting early didn't really help William Brock any. He's still back in 38th spot. Helped Jason Parker a little bit. He's up to 32nd now, but they were at the back anyway. Nick Ortiz still holds the fastest lap. He's not going to get a grand slam because Eric Monaco did lead that one lap, but it's going to be as close to one as you're going to get. And how about this? David Wells, we talked about him earlier. He stayed out when everyone else pitted because he came in earlier. He's currently in the top 20 right now. But his tires are now several laps old, and I worry he might be a roadblock for everybody else. Yeah, you see right here, Chris Lattimore trying to get by him. He recognizes that 19's on worn tires, so he wants by, and he wants by soon. Yeah, you can see a, a huge queue of cars forming up behind David Wells. The strategy worked for a little. It's working currently. Let's see how long it can last, though. Because as they round Peraltada onto the long front straightaway, and David Wells, he's currently running in 18th, 19th place. Let's see if he can hold it for the rest of the day. 
And survey says that if Lattimore don't go by, Hanley will, and there goes Lattimore. So, yeah, I don't think he's going to stay top 20 for long at this rate, especially with some real good cars coming up behind him. Yeah, and you can see Lattimore gets by. Justin Henley gets by. You got Sojanovic and Bouchard back there trying to get by as well. So David Wells, while the strategy worked for a few laps, it's not going to probably not work in the end. And Wells is just going to try and defend as best as he possibly can to get as high a finish as he possibly can. But it's 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 got to be it's the worst feeling when you know you're on old tires everybody around you is faster than you and you and there's nothing you can do about it yeah it's not so bad on like some short tracks but road courses and especially on the super speed the speedways and super speedways you yeah old tires uh not your friend on any of those especially on a track that's as worn as this one. David Wells is currently three seconds slower than everybody else around him, and it's showing on the stopwatch. He is quite a ways behind. We're now at five laps to go. Stojanovic trying to get around on the inside of Peraltada. This is a new one, but he's doing whatever he can to try and get around this 19. So far, he's made it work, and Bouchard's going to follow him through. Yeah, Bouchard, and it looks like Bobo Jones right back there, Miles Mashburn, Zachary Fitzwater. They're all looking to get by him, and they know that even if they don't have the best cars in the field, they've got better cars than him, and, oh, Mashburn going to try three wide here. We saw this work a little bit with A.J. Jones earlier. Let's see if it works this time. There's three wide through the corner. It's. I feel like it's going to work better this time because Wells is much slower, especially on traction, but... Yeah, you see Wells is falling now out of the top 20, and he's almost out of the top 25 now. As once he gets passed by Fitzwater, he will be. So David Wells just doing everything in his power to defend with all his might, but it's just not working for him at this stage. Yeah, and then you you look at the others who are there, and you see you saw Emma Carter there, damaged car. She's gonna looking like she's gonna get past him as. Uh... Chris is on pit road again, and looks like it's a little bit more extended this time with Ortiz going by. Yeah, he, he's got to make some more repairs on that thing. We only have four laps to go in this race now, and Ortiz's lead has been growing. It was... F actually, no, he lost a few a few tens on that lap. It's down to five seconds even. So, but it's still going to be probably too little too late for him, just as we saw in the superstar race at willow springs last week because while devin fair was gaining on ben mcdonald lap after lap he was just running out of laps to make it happen and i fear the same thing is the same fate is going to befall roberto crown jr at the end of this race you see david wells he's fallen back to 27th already and there's still three and a half laps to go for him yeah this is gonna be a long three and a half laps for wells and i don't think i don't think it's gonna be feel so I think it's going to feel long for Ortiz in a different way. He wants these laps over so he can celebrate, but he knows he's got to keep focused, calm, collective, calculated, make sure that he doesn't make any mistakes. He's got no pressure around him. All he's got to work, make sure of is that he's doing what he needs to do to keep that 81 a speck in his mirror. Absolutely. Meanwhile, the battle rages on for third, about 10 seconds off the lead. Christian Vargas and Devin Fair, they continue to battle it out. They're keeping it clean now, which is definitely what Vargas wants to see from a team owner's perspective. But for Ortiz, he's riding an, an almost 50 race winless streak. And we've seen winless streaks get broken before in one-up competition this season. Could it come true for... Nick Ortiz here today. We only have three laps between Ortiz and a very special win for him. As Fair makes a dive on the inside of his teammate, doesn't look like it's going to stick, though. Yeah, it's not quite going to stick, but he's not going to give up. He wants more spots. This is a second second straight. No matter what, if he can hang on to that fourth place position, that's second straight top five, which is something he sorely needs. And then you got Lane Sanders back there. He's not had the worst start to the season, but he certainly hasn't had the, the, the best start either. Yeah, Devin Fair, he just wants to be back in the conversation. He entered this race 26th in points, and he was only that high because of his runner-up at Willow Springs. He entered that race 30th in the points, so he needed a good, a good few races on the track type where he got his first career win last year in Montreal. So Fair 
As things run right now, he would move up to 21st in points, and that is much closer to the top 15 than and that a playoff spot, he would certainly like that. Lane Sanders, likewise, hanging out in fifth place. He's had a pretty lonely day back there as Lane Sanders, but I'm sure he won't mind that a bit. Because although he's going, because he, even though he's gonna fin probably finish in the top five for the second time this season, he's actually gonna lose a few spots in the points because both Vargas and Ortiz are gonna finish ahead of him today. Yeah, that's. Uh... That's not. That's going to make it be a bit bittersweet to get a top five, but I'm sure he'll be pleased with this as well as you see Felix Anderson there trying to get by Wells, who is still the role. He's basically become the rolling chicane I thought drivers like Chris and a few others with damaged cars were going to be. Yeah, and look, at on a queue of about five cars have formed up behind David Wells, oh, who's, who's currently outside the top 30. So David Wells doing doing a herculean effort to try and stay out there on worn tires but it might be but it might be in vain as nick ortiz though he has got about half a lap to go until he sees the white flag that's when he knows this race is official yeah and i couldn't help but notice while we've been talking uh we know austin holloman got back up in the sixth place got by polanski but polanski's lost another couple of spots and somebody that Holloman was holding off earlier and uh, <laughs> and a uh, Ben McDonald is uh, back behind him again uh, you see and Mark Davies moved up a little bit Justin Hutchinson rounding out the top 10 ironically in the in this position of his car number but the white flag is for Nick Ortiz alone as he dives it off into the final in the first corner for the final time Nick Ortiz putting together a solid race he's just got to close it out two and a half miles separate him from his first win in over a year yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be a long one. As you see, Fair trying again to go in, inside of Vargas, but uh, that 54 just strong in the S's. And but for Nick Ortiz, this is gonna be a dream come true for him. He's led all but one lap of this race, and that was by, on strategy. But for Eric Monaco, leading a lap in during the pit cycle, Ortiz would have led them all today. But as he comes through the S's now. For the final time, Nick Ortiz has not put a foot wrong since he took the lead from Crown on lap number one of this race. He's going to come down the back straightaway now for the final time. With Chase Crist looming ahead, it's not going to be not going to matter much for him. Nick Ortiz got to get through to Peraltada one last time. Dies it off into the corner for the final time. And once he gets out of this corner, he'll be heading for home. Nick Ortiz looking for his first win in, a, in over 50 races. Viva Los Mexico for Nick Ortiz as he sees the checkered flag in his sights. You can see it now. He's ce celebrating already. Nick Ortiz gets the job done in Mexico for a dominating drive. His first win in over a year. His third overall. He gets it done in Mexico. Fantastic drive. And Roberto Crown Jr. comes up just a little short. And uh, once again, 6.1 off the lead, but his day will come for sure with the way he's been driving lately. Christian Vargas finally gets his first top five of the year in third, ahead of Devin Fair and his second top five in a row in fourth. Lane Sanders, he runs out the top five. He'll keep a spot in the top ten in points. But what could have been for him? Austin Holloman, career day for him. Finishes sixth, his first top ten in the series. Ben McDonald, he backs up his Willow Springs win with another top 10 in 7th. Mark Davey, 8th. Jared Polanski, 9th. Justin Hutchinson runs out the top 10 in this one, just ahead of Patrick Smith in the 04. But boy, once Nick Ortiz got the lead in this one, there was just no stopping him. And he sure proved it here today. He led 23 of the 24 laps. A very good, very well-deserved day for him. Yeah, I feel like most of the field knew it. I think the only one who wasn't willing to, to accept it was, was uh, Crown. And he he put effort into it, but it just wasn't quite enough. And, you know, it's, it, like you said, his day is coming. And for David Wells, the strategy just wasn't there for him today. He'll finish 30, 39th at the end of this race. Ouch. Tough break for David Wells. He tried a strategy. He may, maybe that strategy was decided for him by an issue early in the race but it won't work out this time around. But for Nick Ortiz, what a great drive he put on today. He did everything right, and he's going to come out of here with a t spot in the top 10 in points, which, considering his start to the season, a very good rebound. Definitely. And then we look at 
we look at All-Star Weekend as well, a mixture of other weekends where he's had trouble. It's This is something he really needed, and let's see if he can ride that momentum in future races. Absolutely. So Nick Ortiz actually now has the second most top tens of anybody this season behind Ben McDonald. And with that, we've got our road racing resume complete for the time being. So we've got a few ovals to come the rest of the way, but those are going to be just as exciting, I'm sure, because next up is our marathon weekend, one of our crown jewels at Kentucky Speedway for race number 11 of the season. It's going to be our, one of our longest races of the year. We hope you'll join us for that one. It's a very special one for one-up racing. So, from James Ellison and from myself as well, we say goodbye from Mexico City, and congratulations to Nick Ortiz. He's, wait, he's paid his due. He's waited a long time, but after almost over 45 races without a win, he gets one here in Mexico, and this one, I'm sure, is going to mean a lot to him for his career going forward.